There's just something really magical about trying to capture the soul of an animal in a painting. And in today's video, I'll show you from start to finish how I painted this little Yorkie. So recently when painting portraits, I've started to use a projector as a really quick and efficient way to make sure that I've got all the features in the right places. It is more satisfying to sketch out your subject by eye, but when you're a professional artist, time is money and this is a much faster way to do it. Using a projector allows me to place the key elements, which are the eyes, the nose and the outline of my subject without spending hours and hours with a rubber and a pencil. Um, you could also use a grid system. I've talked about that in my previous videos. It's entirely up to you. So once that's sketched out, then it's all about getting the, the different shades in. So I'll start with the darkest areas first and then build my way up to the lighter shades gradually. This is an oil painting, so I use a very thin layer of paint to begin with. What I want to do at this stage is just mark out the different areas of colour and shade and just make sure that I've got the different values correct. You can use a black and white um, image of the subject that you're painting to help you with the different values so that you get the dark and the light correct and you're not distracted by colour. Um, or you can just, you know, really focus on those different individual colours one by one. So at this stage, I'm not focused on the texture of the hair. I'm just thinking about where the individual colours are going and getting all of that put down correctly. The texture will come later on in the process. Little by little I work my way towards the lighter colours and this was painted on the second day, the, the lighter colour here, because I, I didn't want my brush to be picking up the, the slightly darker browns and beiges that I'd already put onto the canvas. So I needed a day for the paint to start to dry um, before I used the lighter tones. It's important to start thinking about your background colour quite early on and with this painting I did struggle quite a lot because I had to take into consideration the request of the client for the painting to fit into her decor that was in her living room. As you'll see I changed the tone of the background and made it quite a lot darker um, but I needed to experiment with this before I could find exactly the right shade. So feel free to experiment. Um, with oil paint, it's very easy as well to wipe off the layer and paint over the top. But what you do need to do is make sure you get the background in quite early on in the process of the painting, as you'll find some of the hairs around your animal will start to go into the background. So you'll want to get that sorted before you start working on any of the details. So after a day or two of drying, the canvas is now ready for the next layer of paint. And at this stage, I'm thinking more about the texture and I'm thinking about the way the hair grows. So at this stage, you want to think about using the brush in the direction of the growth of the fur. Um, you don't need to worry about painting every single individual hair. Uh, that will take you forever and it's not necessary. What you want to do is suggest the hair by looking at the direction that it's growing in and selecting a brush that naturally suggests the texture of the fur without you having to paint all the tiny details. I found that a quite old and firm brush seems to be the best for creating the texture of fur. So at this stage you'll want to focus on blending all the different areas of colour and light and shade. So I do this by using a soft dry brush and keep wiping it off once you've been using it in a particular area so make sure it's always clean and little by little you'll be able to blend your different areas so that you can't see sort of any blocks of individual colour. Whilst I'm doing this, I'll, I'll be thinking, okay, so I want to blend the light part into the dark part here, and then swap it over, so blend the dark area into the light area. 
And if you do this sort of alternating between blending one way and blending the other, then you'll find you get perfect blend between the two areas. The final stage of the painting is my favourite because it's where you add the little details, the very fine hairs which you can paint over the top. It's important to try to get the balance right and not start to paint every individual hair. It's all about suggesting what you can see so the human brain can look at the image and understand it. I hope this little video helped you, let me know in the comments and if you like this kind of content please like and subscribe. Until next time, take care and stay creative, bye for now!